This is an update on the Mobile Alert Communication Management, or MACM, profile from IHE that's in the work cycle for this year. Um, essentially, it is a fireization of an existing IHE profile called Alert Communication Management. That profile is um, run out of the IHE Patient Care Devices Committee. The MACM profile is being run out of the ITI, or IT Infrastructure Committee. Um, fireization means that it's taking the existing ACM standard, or at least um, part of it, and we'll see what that part is in, in a minute, um, and updating it to use, instead of using the HL7 v2 messages, um, to use the um, FHIR uh, specification. FHIR lets you define, uh, it's a more RESTful API um, that has a JSON and XML representation. Um, and in this case, the mobile of, as a part of the mobile alert communication management doesn't mean that the alert ends up on a mobile device, um, which it can um, and will be in many of our use, use cases. It's more about the uh, originators of the alerts might be on mobile devices, might not have all the infrastructure of a HL7 v2 message that's in the existing ACM. Uh, it's also a, a bit of a modernization of that um, existing ACM standard um, for fire. Now, one other difference between um, a ACM and MACM is that we've extended the use cases to meet some of the, the high priority um, use cases that we're seeing in low resource settings, and we'll get into that in just a minute. A couple of logistical things. Um, the last week of April, we'll be wrapping up the volume two um, specification. Um, or the draft specification. Um, that volume two covers the messages and the transactions being used um, to, su to support the use cases. The use cases are in the volume one section that's already been finalized as of uh, February. Um, after that volume two is finished, uh, the last week of April, we'll be quickly moving into our public comment period, which is around May, June. Uh, and then from there, we will be resolving the public comments and aiming for publication in September as part of the IHE ITI work cycle. Um, a little bit of context of uh, for how we're deploying the or using the Macam profile is that we're looking at uh, resource constrained environments um, as uh, in low middle income countries as well as underserved communities in high income countries. Um, so we are working to ensure that that these standards are implementable in a lot of the settings that we uh, intend to deploy it. Um, another thing issue that we're trying to address is the proliferation of alerting and messaging services and health applications um, that makes it difficult for a Ministry of Health to manage, um, both from a governance of what's there and de being deployed in a country, but as well as um, sort of the financial arrangements needed to deploy these messaging services. So having a, uh, a infrastructural component that can be readily managed and by the Ministry, I, I think goes a long ways to giving them the power to rein in some of the, the, the the M Health uh, proliferation, um, both um, it's not going to be the the full solution. I think we we also need to see um, things like ADX, which um, lets us report aggregate data from these systems. Um, but this is certainly, I, th I think, a key puzzle piece in um, uh, bringing in some of the the, the siloed systems um, from the M Health world. Um, so here's an example from Uganda of all the various M Health applications that are are there. Um, this led to the DHIS the M Health image. This is an example of the uh, M Health applications in Uganda. Just to give you a, a, an idea of what the situation looks like. This map is a couple years old, but you can see that we have multiple systems that uh, the Ministry of Health needs to, to have a little bit better uh, control over. Um, the first use case is a crisis response. Um, so 
in this case, we would be looking, for example, in uh, there's been an outbreak on a, of Ebola in a in a region or a district, and you want to alert the health workers that there is an outbreak, um, potentially providing them more information or, or means to have more information on updated care protocols, what they should be looking for. Um, this could also extend to things like a, a um, tsunami or typhoons, other disaster response efforts. Um, the, the disaster response efforts I, th uh, I think would be a, a very useful and interesting thing that we should be looking to try to, in, to make sure that systems are in place to respond to um, disaster um, events rather than coming in after the fact and trying to build systems to respond to. So uh, this is a, a very good opportunity to build in that infrastructure. Second use case is on care reminders. Um, these are messages sent to either health workers or a subject of a care, a subject of care um, about, for example, a missed appointment, a um, an update to a uh, reminder to take a, a medicine. Um, these their specific reference to the Rwanda and Tanzania examples um, on care reminders in the document. These could also be triggered. Uh, these could be triggered both by a human saying, hey, you need to do something, as well as, um, for example, an analysis of an EMR or EHR system. Um, this is a diagram from the, the MACM standard, its current draft. Um, what you see are four um, uh, actors here, the alert reporter, alert manager, alert communicator, as well as the care services info manager. So this is a figure that's specific to health workers, um, and that health worker information is held in the care services info manager. What's MACM specific is the alert reporter, the alert manager, and alert communicator, the three actors on the top. Um, the alert reporter is the person that originates the alert or message. The alert manager is responsible distributing for distributing those alerts to one or more alert communicators, and the alert communicator is the the actor that's um, responsible for delivering that uh, message to the health worker, as well as providing any uh, status updates on on the dissemination of that alert. Um, what we are discussing in the MACM profile is that the ITI X01 and ITI X02 transactions, these are draft transaction numbers, they will be changing. Um, these are based on the fire flag resource. So there is a, um, a resource in flag that we, uh, resource called flag in fire that we are profiling um, for this standard. Um, the, on the right hand side, we have the disseminate alert and report dissemination alert status. That's based on WCTP. Um, we are adopting at this point wholeheartedly, um, without change, everything from ACM. So this, the PCD06 and PCD07 are defined in the ACM or alert communication management profile from the PCD. So on the right hand side is going to remain unchanged um, for in this draft version of MACM. It's the left hand side that's um, being changed. Uh, and it's the left-hand side that I think we will be using. And we'll get into how that's being used in some examples later on. Um, and here's later on. Um, M Hero is one example um, where we have Rapid Pro. Um, so a lap Rapid Pro with a facade interface perhaps sitting in front of it would act as both the alert manager and alert communicator um, actors. So going back to our diagram here where we have the WCTP protocol, we won't actually be implementing the WCTP protocol for our um, for the Rapid Pro M Hero link. Um, uh, there isn't a particular need for that right now. Um, just to note that I think that this is going to cause some um, questions that we need to answer for what it means to uh, certify something as being OpenHIE compliant. Because we're not going to uh, to ask that the 
Rapid Pro implement the PCD06 and PCD07 transactions. It's not going to be a fully fledged alert manager, yet nevertheless it will implement the other transactions, the ITI X01, ITI X02. So I think we just need to make sure that our um, the OpenHIE certification process is reflective of uh, this potential reality. Um, the Care Services Info Manager is our interlinked registry, so that's providing the contact information for health workers. It might also provide um, the facility and geographic information using the facility directory and organization and directory from that, mm, so that we can um, uh, find health workers based on the facility or, or geographic information. Um, these, the care services info manager could be fed by multiple applications such as IRIS, resource map, DHS2, um, open LMIS. It, that really depends on the use cases that MHERO needs to support and the, the country specific um, deployments. Um, but all of these carry, potentially carry facility um, geographic and health worker information. Putting that into the Care Services Info Manager lets us um, isolate the various um, source data systems from the Rapid Pro um, system. So we're only dealing with one interface here rather than multiple. Um, in going on, in right now, what we will, we're planning on doing with Iris is it's going to be initiating. Um, these report alert and query for alert status transactions against the alert manager. So the report alert is the transaction that actually lets you create an alert. The query for alert status lets you see if that alert was delivered, has there been any acknowledgement from the health worker, um, um, and generally see what's going on with that alert. Um, it's not limited to just IRIS. Any software that needs to communicate with health workers and has information on health workers can use the exact same um, report alert and query for alert status. And I suspect that we will be seeing implementations of that as well. Um, that everything to, so far has been about health workers. We can also have a very similar um, diagram, but on the bottom instead of the care services info manager, which has um, health worker information. We can look at a patient's demographic supplier, which would have a client, which would be our client registry, have information about subjects of care. Um, in this case, we've identified the PDQM transactions for querying the the demographic information on the clients. Um, it certainly could be straight up PDQ or, or other options. This is just a, an example of how these might interact. Um, um, but in this case, we can the alert reporter can query the, the patient demographic supplier to identify um, uh, a cohort of patients, for example, to deliver uh, an alert on, whereas the alert manager would be using that same um, transaction to determine the contact information. Um, the in Tanzania we are like how we would use this is that we have a immunization database which has a uh, a list of defaulters list of people that have not um, received their immunizations on schedule and we'd issue a report alert um, against the alert manager um, to send out an alert saying hey you should come in for the for the appointment. Um, Right, this is happening now. Um, just we're not using a standard. So as we as Macam gets published, uh, we will be switching to using this as a standard.